Uh, we're just coming to you from my lounge room. We're just hanging out tonight. We're going to chat a bit about cricket. We're going to answer a few questions. We got the Facebook Live going and we got Instagram firing up right now. So hopefully we've got a few people joining us. Get a Instagram. It's Tom here. We're just hanging out tonight, Sunday Night Live. We're going to chat a bit about, uh, answer a few questions and just chat a bit about cricket and uh, discuss a few things that, that uh, people have sent in this week. So we've got Keno on. Thanks for getting on there, Keno. Keno's our main man. He, uh, he's our other head mentor and he, uh, he often does the live video as well. So I'm sure you've all seen a lot of him. If you're on Instagram or Facebook, let us know. Uh, leave us a message. Tell us where you're coming from. Uh, we've got someone there on Instagram. Hey man, your tips are really good. Thanks guys, thanks for joining. So we're going to get into it. Tonight we're talking about how judging ourselves um, is really detrimental to our performance. So it's something that I see a lot of um, with, with players that I work with of, of all ages and it's something that I've struggled with myself in my uh, cricket, cricket career is really being quite harsh and, and judging of ourselves uh, in our practice sessions and also in our games. And the the negative voice that's always there when we don't hit a ball or bowl a ball at our best is just really detrimental to our performance. It's um it can really ruin sessions and it can ruin games as well. And it's something that um, as players we can work on. We can really try and work on that our mindset so that we we can be aware of that negative voice and we can try and quieten it. We can try and replace it with some more positive, constructive thoughts. So. Um, the key to um, the key to improving your, your sort of the judging of yourself is firstly becoming aware you're doing it. So if you're not aware you're doing it and you're being really critical, and TK, thanks for joining us, mate. Tom's one of my uh, teammates at Melville, one of our fast bowlers. Thanks for thanks for joining us, Teeks. Um, so. If you're really judgmental of everything you do, you're always going to feel like you're letting yourself down. You're always going to feel like you're, you're in a negative um, frame of mind and you're sort of going to always be yeah, really, really hard on yourself and, and it's, not a good, it's not a good way to be. So I had a session this week with a guy and after every shot he was sort of, it wasn't perfect and he's really new to the game, he's only just learning the game and he was sort of saying, oh you prick or that's a shit shot or something. And, what it does is it not only sort of gets you feeling bad about yourself, but it, it transitions into your next shot. And if you're if you're holding on to some negative feeling on um, something from from the previous ball, it's going to hold you back for the next ball. So you really need to try and adapt or adopt, I should say, a mindset of not being judgmental of yourself, of being really. Um, relaxed and and just letting things ha happen. Whatever happens, happens is a great uh, attitude and philosophy to adopt. G'day Instagram, who we got there? Jack, let us know where you're coming from guys. Thanks for joining us. Mac is moody. How are you mate? Young Williton player. Um, great to have you there mate. Uh, so what we really want to get to is this this mindset where we're not judging ourselves. We can just go in and train or go in and play and we're being non-judgmental of whatever it is we do. If we're bowling, we bowl a bad ball, we just try and learn from it, and then we try and move on and say, okay, I didn't execute, um, didn't execute uh, what I was trying to do, but I've learned from it, I, next time I'm gonna do something else differently, and then you move forward. You don't hold on to that negative feeling of really thinking, oh, that was shit, oh, no good, oh, I'm playing poorly. You've really got to try and get past that as quickly as you can so that you can get back in the present moment and back into the next battle. You don't want that um, previous shot to hold you back and really ruin the rest of your session. Um, I have that, a problem, that problem a lot. Yeah, so a lot of players do. Everyone does. I've struggled with it, and at times I still have to remind myself to be non-judgmental. you really got to... Nick Nisbet's joined us. Muffin, how are you, mate? Juliet Tango, Juliet's one of our fans. Thanks for joining us, Juliet. Yeah, so you really got to try and uh, adopt this mindset where you're non-judgmental. AJ, thanks for joining us, AJ, one of the great guys. Um, so a, a really good book and something that helped me a lot was a book called The Inner Game of Tennis. And it, obviously it's tennis, but it's all mindset-related stuff, and it really carries over to cricket. And one of the things... Um, the, the guy who's written that book about, um, talks about is when people become, um, when they're judgmental and they, they become doubtful and tight, 
So when we're playing at our best, we really want to be relaxed and, and loose and really sort of really positive. Benny Wakeham, Benny's uh, a young gun playing in South Australia. Thanks for joining us, Benny. Um, yeah, you, you play your best when you're relaxed and you play with freedom and, and being judgmental really makes you tight and sort of um, really doubtful about yourself. So if you can, um, if you can adopt a mindset of being non-judgmental, then you can really allow yourself to play with freedom. And like I say, it's something that I've worked really hard at over the last few years is just trying to not judge my shot. If I hit a shit shot, so be it. I've, I've, as long as I've got my process right, that's all I can ask for. I, I often, as much as we want to try, we often can't control the outcome. The wicket might do something or whatever. We're always going to make mistakes. So if we can accept our mistakes and we can try and be non-judgmental about making those mistakes rather than having that voice that says that was shit oh you're shit or oh, i'm batting poorly what a crap shot or something and because we'd never talk to someone else the way that we our internal voice talks to ourselves so it's like we've got in the in the game of tennis tim galloway talks about having two selves we have our body our doing self and we have our mind that is sort of like a commentator and our body's trying its hardest to sort of execute a shot, bowl a bouncer, bowl a yorker, bowl an outswinger, or play a cover drive, cut shot, whatever it is. And our mind sometimes goes, oh, that was shit, um, crap shot, get your elbow up. And we start being so critical that we move on to the next ball. And our mind is still in the previous ball, worrying and, and beating ourselves up. And our body's trying to be over here and try and play. And, and that's often when we make our mistakes. And like I've just said before, that it can ruin whole sessions. I've seen lots of guys batting really well, three or four balls, five, ten balls, and then they play a bad shot and their body language changes and they really get really down on themselves and they start cursing and stuff and then for the next ten minutes of their net, they play poorly because they haven't been able to let that one mistake just go away and, and move on quickly from it. They've really held on to it and, and um, really let it affect them and that's, that's what we're trying to um, say here is just really learn how to move on from that as quickly as you can. And the best thing, the way to do it, the first thing is become aware of it. You've got to become aware that you're doing it and you've got to try and catch yourself doing it. So if you play a, if you play a, a shit shot and it's not as executed as, as well as you'd like, then you've just got to accept that and say, okay. And if you start hearing yourself saying, oh, that was shit, no, you're no good or something like that, then you've got to try and catch yourself, say I'm, I'm being negative, I'm being really judgmental of myself again, and you've got to try and maybe start noting it down, whether it's at the end of the session, just note down what sort of things you're saying to yourself, saying, oh, I'm being really critical of myself, um, I'm, I'm saying, saying certain things, and Kino's just said, um, it, it certainly does affect your body language, it's, the opposition can feed off that as well, so if, you're, if you do play a bad shot and you're internally beating yourself up, obviously the opposition can't hear what you're saying in your mind, but they can certainly like hone in and see your body language and they will often feed off that. So you really got to move on as quickly as you can. So the way to do that is become aware of what you're, what you're saying to yourself. If you start realising and understanding what you're saying to yourself, then you can make the change. Another really um, sort of good thing to, to do is to try and, maybe make, you, make those things that you're saying a bit silly, like say, say it in a silly voice or something, to try and take the power away from what you're saying. Because ultimately we want to replace those thoughts with either no thoughts where you're just sort of fully focused and you're not being critical, or some positive thoughts or some constructive thoughts where you're trying to learn from each, each mistake. So we've got a few people coming in on Instagram. Um, who we got here? Sandu. Let us know where you're coming from, guys. Advan. Mac is Moody. We've already said hello to. Thanks for joining us. So become aware um, of your negative self-talk and your judgment, um, your judgment of yourself. You really want to try and each time you your, your um, each time Tiff. How are you, Tiff? Tiff's uh, coming to us from Perth. One of our friends. Thanks for joining us. Um, each time you become, you find yourself being negative. Write that down, write down those thoughts you're having, and then eventually want to, we want to try and turn those negative thoughts into something positive. We want to try and all constructive. We really want to change that dialogue and just be willing to forgive ourselves quickly and move on. So I hope that helps. Um, if you've got any more questions about that, let us know. 
Um, but yeah, try and change that internal dialogue. Try and not be judgmental of every single shot you're playing or, or bowling. You're going to make mistakes. Accept the mistakes. Move on as quickly as you can. Batting and bowling, cricket is all about being in the present moment. So really focus your attention in the present moment as much as possible. Move past those mistakes and don't be too critical of yourself. Accept you're going to make mistakes. Something that's helped me a lot is having the mindset, whatever happens, happens. Just take the... We, we're, we're, as long as we're trying our hardest and we're, our process is good, whatever happens, happens. Harsh, thanks for joining us, mate. Harsh is a, a good young cricketer in Perth. And we've got Ryan James. He's our leg spin mentor. He's, uh, he's a brilliant mentor. We've actually got some points from him tonight on one of the questions we've got. So we'll get into some questions we've got this week already. And if you have any questions, guys, please don't be afraid to ask them. Um, so... Someone wrote, I get out LBW a lot. Should I change my grip or my stance, such as opening up a bit more? Now, we actually have a lot of people um, contact us and say, I, I get out LB or I struggle to play on the leg side. And that seems to be a really common theme among uh, batters. And all it is, and a lot of it, the reason, most of the reason is that their head is falling over, is that they're not balanced when the ball's released and their head sort of falls over to the offside, and when your head falls over, your foot has to follow it, and so you step across your stumps, and then with the ball straight, you've got to play around your pad, you're not playing with a straight bat. So the key to not getting out LBW and improving your leg side play, getting more power and access to your leg side, is getting that head still in your stance, getting that head still at release, and not letting it fall across. So. I would say the answer to that is you don't need to change your grip. Your grip shouldn't have anything to do with getting out LBW, but you may need to fiddle with your stance. You want to really have a, a nice balanced stance, a nice neutral stance where you can go forward or back and you can go sort of your, your weight is going down the wicket and then when the ball's released, if you see it outside off, then you can move your head towards the line of the ball. But if your head's moving across to the offside, before the ball's released, um, then your, your foot has to land and, and sort of counteract that, and then you've got to play around the pad. So you really, really want to concentrate and make sure you're still at the release of the ball. And a good way to do that is if you're practicing with a friend, is just get them to, when they're about to throw, get them to stop. Get them to stop throwing, and then if you're moving and your head's falling over, then it shows that you're not still. And get them to do that a few times, and eventually, hopefully, you'll be able to start staying still and then once you're still and you're evenly balanced, you can see where the line is, you see the ball come out the hand, and then you can move. So I hope that helps on that one. And there's, I know that's a common problem. That's something we hear about a lot. So hopefully um, everyone can take something out of that. What else have we got here on Instagram? Um, we've got a few people joining us. Matt Vasolo, I'm from Melbourne. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Asad, can you please reply? Sorry, I missed you there, mate. Um, playing tennis ball cricket ruins our game. Oh, not necessarily. If, if, if you're working on something, tennis ball cricket can certainly help. Um, yeah, if, you can get, if, you, if, you, if you're playing tennis ball cricket, that can certainly help as long as you're working on something, as long as you've got something to get out of it. Anytime you've got a bat in your hand or a ball in your hand and you're learning, there's nothing wrong with that. You can certainly learn from that. Another good point, Ryan's just written um, our leg spinning mentor, and he's working with a number of, uh, a number of spinners around the world, actually. Um, we'll get to more on that in a minute, but is get someone to film yourself batting. And if you can get a friend if, um, to film while you're batting and you can see if you're falling over, we're going back to the previous point about falling over, then you can really, uh, you can really correct that and you can become aware if you're doing it. Flano, thanks for joining us, mate. We've got a mate of mine from school who's joined us. Uh, Jimmy Newnham, one of the Wacker A-grade better batters. Um, Gun, thanks for joining us. Jimbo, good friend of mine. What else we got happening on Instagram? We've got a few, few people commenting. Um, Versace, sup, mate? Hope all is well. Thanks, mate. Hope you're well, too. Uh, we've got people coming in from India and the UK, all over Australia. So thanks, uh, thanks for joining us. So we'll get on to the next question. Uh, we had a young guy message us this week and say, I field at square leg and point and have good reactions and like diving around the field, but my flat catching is poor. Can you suggest any drills to improve my catching? So, like, ev like any skill, uh, Gussie Robson's just joined us. How are you, Gus? He's a good friend of mine as well. He's 
uh, opening batsman for Leicestershire in England. Uh, he played out here in Perth with us at Melville this season. Uh, he's going to have a massive year for Leicester. So thanks for joining us, Gus. So back to the question on, on catching. Like batting or bowling, you've just got to put in the work. You've got to get lots and lots of volume in. If, you, if you're low on confidence with your catching, you've got to do the work. You've got to catch lots of balls. And especially in this day and age where um, batters just want to bat for a short period of time, smack them out the park, bowlers want to sort of 20-20 cricket. There's, I think players are going away from training as hard and as, as long as they used to. Uh, Jolie Paris, one of the Wacker boys, uh, Australian international. Thanks for joining us, Jolie. Another great bloke, another great cricketer. Um, so with, with this fielding question, you've just got to put the work in. You've got to just start with the basics. If you're not confident with your catching, you've got to... You've got to start with the basics. Just get someone five, ten metres away from you, whacking balls at you. Get them with a mid on or whatever. Whacking catches, whacking catches, whacking catches. Catch a hundred balls before you start your session. Catch another fifty or hundred at the end. You've got to get the volume in. Then, when you get your technique and your basics right with your catching, you can go to a more advanced drill, something like a a, a cut where you've got a a, a, a uh, someone underarming or throwing, and you've got a batter cutting them. You're actually more uh, realistic. Uh, we've got Mark Turner, one of my teammates from Melville again, and we've got Becca Pink, my fiance, and we've got one of my good mates, Matt Wiley, just joined. Thanks for joining us, guys. Um, so you can go to a more advanced drill once you get your basics right, but catching is all about volume. You've just got to put the work in. You see the professionals, they spend hours and hours and hours on catching. So make sure you're putting the work in, mate. So um, whoever it was that asked that question, and if anyone else is struggling with their catching, you've got to put the work in. You've got to just do spend half an hour just catching. Just vary your length, vary the distance that you're catching from, but you can't expect to be good at it, and you can't expect to be confident at it if you're not practicing it. Shawnee Terry, Ben Knowles, thanks for joining us, lads. All the good eggs are on here. Um, so this is a question about um, bowling spin, and I've actually asked Ryan. Our, Ryan James is our spin bowling mentor. So he works with a number of young spinners here in WA and he also works with a young spinner in England who they, they uh, do mentoring over, over FaceTime and Skype and they exchange videos and it's, um, it's been going really well. So Ryan, someone asked, how can a spinner bowl more consistently? And this is a pretty broad question, I guess, but Ryan's sort of first point was that there's no substitute for practice. So like our fielding, um, like our fielding, topic just then, you've got to put the work in. You can't expect the results if you don't put the work in. Um, I put a post up on our Instagram a few days ago, and for those of you that haven't checked it out, go and give it a, um, go and have a look. It was about how much Sachin Tendulkar used to train, and it was absolutely incredible. He used to hit, uh, practice and hit balls when he was a teenager for six or seven hours a day. Just all morning, have a break, another few hours, have a break, a few hours in the evening, and it's no wonder he has gone on to achieve what he's achieved and become the world's best batter and score 34,000 international runs because he put the work in. So if you want to be consistent as a bowler, as a batter, as anything else, you've got to put the work in. Brett Kroger, uh, Gucci, nice to have you on here, mate. Thanks for joining us. Miles Clayton has said, any leg spin tips? Miles, I'm actually not a leggy, so I'm not going to pretend to know too much about it. Leg spinning is an incredibly difficult art, and it's something that um, is I just am often in awe of leggies because I try it myself, and um, it's it's so bloody hard. But we're going to actually have a live feed at some point with Ryan, our leg spinning and our spin bowling mentor. So we will make sure we let you know when that's happening, and that, um, hopefully all the spinners can tune in. Then Ryan is a former um, Western Australian Warriors. Squad member, um, played a lot of second 11, so he's, um, he's got a wealth of knowledge as far as spin bowling goes. Um, so back to the question, no substitute for practice. You've got to put the work in. You've just got to, got to bowl, got to bowl, got to bowl. So um, Ryan also mentioned that you get, being consistent is about getting the release right and consistent. He said 90% of the battle is getting your release right. He said you can get your body right all the time, but it's all about the release. So... If you can't get down and practice at the nets, and you, you don't need anyone else to practice with as a bowler, as a batter you, you generally do, but as a bowler you can bowl at the stumps, you don't need anyone else, so there's no excuse not to bowl. But he said always have a ball in your hand, always have a ball that you're sort of spinning up to yourself, if you're an offie or a leggy, whatever, always have a ball and get that feeling, get that feeling of having the ball come out of your hand. Have that feeling, get comfortable and really 
um, get specific of the point on your finger. If you're leggy, whatever finger it is that you spin it out of, really get comfortable and get used to that feeling of spinning the ball off that finger. Satch Galvati, uh, an old teammate of mine from the UK, thanks for joining us. What have we got happening on Instagram? Mitch, how are you, mate? Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us. So, um, get the grip right. Get your grip right every time. You can just be sitting on your couch at home. You can be watching TV, whatever it is you're doing. And I know Ryan used to do this when he was younger. He always had a ball in his hand. And Warney talks about that. Warney, whenever he's commentating, he often talks um, about getting a ball in your hand so it feels familiar. And Ryan's just said there, reminded me on the, on the Facebook feed, that feels familiar. You really want it to feel familiar in your hand. You don't want to get to a game and have the ball sort of like feeling unfamiliar and not sure what you're doing. And if, if you're only practicing two or three times a week, that's not enough. Even if you can't get to the next, like I've said, get the ball in your hand, get it so it feels familiar. Um, and you, it just becomes second nature. You just want that action, that feeling to become second nature. You want it just to be so comfortable that you really know what it feels like to, to come out of your hand. So as far as consistency goes, nothing replaces practice but if you can't get down to the nets, get a ball in your hand and have it in your hand all the time. Just be spinning it up all the time. Get familiar with that ball in your hand. Um, last question we've had um, from this week. Rowy, Michael Rose joined us. Thanks very much for joining us, Rowy. He's our third grade captain here at Melville. We've got a question here from Tom on Instagram. I have problems playing the ball off my legs when I'm batting. I get a lot of them since I'm a lefty. Any help? Yeah, Tom, we just spoke about that actually. Um, we've done a YouTube video that um, a lot of people have said has help, have helped them. So if, maybe go and check that out, search Cricket Mentoring on YouTube. It's about uh, the titles playing on the leg side. So it all comes back to your head position. If your head's falling over, then you've got to play around your pad. So something Chris Rogers said to me that he thinks about um, when he's setting up is pushing your, your weight down almost to the leg side of the stumps. So if you're having a problem with falling over, I'm doing it as a lefty here, Tom. If you're having a problem falling over to the offside, push your weight down to the legs. Try and start your head going down to the leg side of the stumps because you're never going to fall back. You're always going to fall across. So it's all about that head position. If your head's falling over, then your foot's got to follow it and step and plant, and then you've got to play around your pad or adjust that foot and make a second movement. So really, it all comes back to your head. Work hard on getting your head and your balance right Get your stance comfortable. As a lefty, you may need to open up your stance a little bit. Um, but all I can stress is get your head right, push your weight down the wicket, and that should help with um, playing on the leg side. But check out our YouTube video. That goes into a bit of detail on that as well. Uh, Mitch, I won the 13th comp for Rocky and Manager. Well done, Mitch. Uh, it's grand final day. Oh, there's a lot of grand finals going on around uh, Australia, New Zealand and stuff at the moment. We, uh, we had a really exciting finish in the... Wacker Premier Cricket Comp this afternoon at, um, at the Wacker. Subiaco Floriot um, chased down Joondalup's 284. Uh, the pretty epic partnership. 90, unbeaten 90 run partnership between the number 8 and number 10. Uh, Hansbury the captain. So well done, Subi. Anyone else has won flags? Well done. Um, uh, okay, Chris Joshi on Facebook. Chris is a, is a great young um, player who's actually in our peak performance program. He, uh, he has asked, is there any drill to be, a batting drill to be done alone? Um, g'day Andrew, g'day Carol, thanks for joining us guys, just chilling here in Perth, talking a bit of cricket. Um, yeah, it's hard, batting is hard to, to practice alone because we, we need to train our mind and body to face the moving object and that's ultimately what batting is. A lot of batting is picking up the line and length and reacting to it, so it's hard to do a drill on your own. There are a few things you can do. Something that I suggest a lot is, is shadow batting in it with a mirror, which a full-length mirror, so you can get some visual feedback. Um, picking up your bat and just playing your shots with a mirror in front of you really gives you some, some feedback instantly because when you're batting normally, all you can do is feel what you're doing. You can't actually see what you're doing. So by having a full-length mirror, that gives you some visual feedback. So that's a really, um, really good one to do on your own. Another thing you can do, which I did a bit when I was a, a younger player, was you can put a ball under your chin and sort of rest it between your chin and your collarbone and then do some drop drives. So you've got to push your head forward, sort of lift your chin a bit so the ball drops out, and then you can drive it. So you don't actually need someone there, but 
it's also a really good drill for getting your head forward because if your head stays back, then the ball drops and it's harder to hit. You've got to push your head forward, drop the ball from your chin, and then drive it. So hope that helps, Chris. That's something you can do, um, do on your own. Marty Brown. Marty, thanks for joining us. An old uh, nemesis up in Darwin, a very good cricketer, a uh, wicketkeeper batsman who did very well for Pints Cricket Club in Darwin. Thanks for joining us, Marty. Just checking the Instagram feed. Uh, Arjun, thanks for joining us. How to increase one's performance in a match. So something we're big on at Cricket Mentoring, Simon and myself talk a lot about is getting your mindset right. It's, I, uh, I went to the Wacker today and had a, had a chat with one of their development coaches, um, Stewie Walters, who is uh, an ec- excellent cricketer himself and he's now transitioning and becoming a very good coach. And we spoke about how important it is to get your mind right and get your mindset right and he's he's now coaching and he was a former f- professional cricketer but he um he's whenever he plays he seems to be scoring hundreds in grade cricket and he said it's just because he's just relaxed and he's got his mind right and that's something we teach our programs are all um based on mindset training so if you're interested in any sort of mental or mindset training programs then please contact us we've got a peak performance tro- program which is a 12-week online program um, about training your mindset, skills, things like your belief, your, uh, how to overcome fear, improve your concentration and attention, um, how to improve your confidence, how to get in the zone, those sort of things, they're all the most important things to know when playing. And they're the things that, Arjun, that are going to help you improve your performances in the match. Because so many people, we hear so many people say, oh, I play well in the nets, but I struggle in a match. And that's because there's the fear of getting out, there's the fear of failure, there's the fear of judgment, there's all these expect, expectation and pressure, that all these things that aren't in, um, in a training session, in a practice session. So you can play with freedom in the nets and the best players are able to put that fear or that worry to the side um, when they play and they just play with freedom. So Arjun, it's all about getting that mindset right. And things like reading books, um, watching TED Talks, anything you can do to improve your mindset. Meditation, that's something we teach in our peak performance program. Affirmations, these sort of mental skills. A lot of people don't realize you can improve your mindset through mental skills training. And I wish I had known this stuff 10 or 15 years ago when I was a young, aspiring cricketer. And it it was... it wasn't through a lack of hitting balls that I wasn't successful as um, a professional cricketer. It was that I didn't understand the power of the, my mindset. So I hope that helps, Arjun. What, uh, what else have we got here? Chris said, that sounds like a good idea. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for your help. Hey, how to be a consistent performer. Um, the consistency a lot is about your routines and your habits. So... And being aware of yourself, um, that's something we'll probably cover in another topic in more detail, but the more aware you can be of yourself and your game, the more consistent you're going to be. And what I mean by that is, if you understand what it takes for you to get sort of in the zone or get like into the space mentally and emotionally to perform at your best, then you're going to be consistent. So if you need to be really relaxed and having a joke with your mates, um, and then you go out to bat and you're in a good mood and then you play at your best. That's what you need to do all the time. But that's the awareness to know you're doing that. Um, but consistency is all about being aware about yourself and understanding yourself. and Having, having <coughs> routines and habits that you can go, go back to all the time, consistently do it. That might be a starter routine. It might be a... Um, and it's also a pre-ball routine. In between each ball, you want to be really consistent in your routines. So, yeah, we'll talk more about understanding yourself in another video. That's, that's a, that'll be a long discussion, but that's a great question. Consistency is something that we all strive for, and that's what the best players have. They're all consistent. So they really understand themselves, and they're able to get themselves um, into the mindset they need um, more often than not. A uh, question on Facebook from Andrew Hazard. Andrew, again, is in our peak performance program. He's a great young cricketer, plays for Penrith in Sydney. And he's off to play at my old club in England, East Coast, this year. So he's a, he's a legend. Hey, Tom, any tips on improving the skill of summer, of summing up game situations and adapting your game plan so as to best cope with those game situations? Oh, it, this is a tough one. I think um, improving the skill of summing up game situations, a lot of it comes to experience. And you're not, it's hard to, you can't buy experience. You can't beat experience. And 
I guess something you can do is is try and just really be a student of the game. Really like try and every time you're watching cricket or you're listening to cricket or something, you want to be learning something. You really want to, don't just sit and watch and just admire. Try and learn something. Try and learn what the commentators are talking about. Try and Try and learn what um, the batsmen are doing. What are their game plans? How's Steve Smith dealing with the Indians trying to bowl at his pads? How's um, David Warner dealing with Ashwin coming around the wicket? Try and learn how people go about things. See what the captain's doing with the fields. Just try and really... And then every time you're playing, the other thing is, is ask questions. Ask questions of people above you. Ask questions of your teammates who are older. Ask questions of some mentors or some batting coaches or bowling coaches, whoever you're working with. Ask questions, and that's a great way to fast track your sort of game awareness and your, your understanding of a game. But ultimately, it comes down to playing. You've just got to get in the moment, get in the games, and every time you, you're in a game situation, again, you should be learning something. You might fail at some, some point, you might fail in a run chase or bowling last over, but if you learn from it, next time you're in there, hopefully you can sum up the game a bit differently, try something different, and hopefully have a more positive result. So, good question, Andrew. Hope that helps. Uh, we've got Brendan joining us. Brendan's a, a good young cricketer. We do a bit of work with in New South Wales. Um, his semi-final got rained off yesterday, so he was pretty devo about that. Duff, Ryan Duffield, another uh, first-class cricketer, has joined us, one of the Wacker Fast Bowlers and good friend of mine. Thanks for joining us, Duff. What else have we got here on Instagram? Um... Brendan said, how do we sign up for the Peak Performance Program? So that's a program we've got online. Um, anyone can sign up at any time. It's a 12-week online mindset training program, as I've mentioned. Um, I will post the link. It's, uh, I will post the link on our Facebook video. For those of you on Instagram, I will put something on Instagram as well um, and to make sure you can access that. It's, uh, we've had really positive feedback. We had a guy the other day say it's help, helping change his life. Um, so that's uh, pretty pretty epic to hear. He's, he's really sort of turning things around it because these mental skills aren't just about cricket. They're about life in general as well. So, um, Brendan, I'll send you some information on that. And anyone else, it'll be on our Facebook page. Or send us a message um, on Instagram if you are interested in some more information on that. Um, you go to the website, Brendan. Yep. Um, give me a shout-out. Who's that? Harry... Edmonds, one, two, four. Harry, thanks for joining us, mate. There's a shout out. Um, are heavier bats better than light ones? Rowan, oh mate, it's a personal preference. Like I like light bats because I'm not, I'm a huge guy. I just, I want to be in control and I like to play the cut and the pull. Generally, if you've got a heavier bat, it's harder to cut and pull. You've got to pick the bat up high and you've got to get bat speed. So it's a personal preference, mate. Just. Uh, Whatever works for you. I know Tendulkar used a heavy bat. Some people like heavier bats. There's more wood in it. Might travel further, but it's you're probably going to have slower bat speed. Um, Tom said, "My head does often fall over, so I will try to make sure my head is straight." Thanks for the tips, and I'm going to check out your YouTube video now. Sweet. Um, Arjun again. Harry, how to bowl quick, mate? I'm not a fast bowler. We'll have to. We'll get some. Simon is an all-rounder. He's a uh, He's a batting, batting all-rounder, bowls seamers, so he can talk in the coming weeks about bowling quick. Or we'll get, we might get Ryan Duffield or one of our, our fast bowling uh, mates and mentors to, to come on and do a chat about bowling. So unfortunately, I can't help you with that one, mate. I'm rubbish fast bowler. Um, what else? Any, any other questions? I'm just scrolling through Instagram. Thanks for joining us, guys. How to be confident? Good question. So that's something that we cover in detail in our peak performance program, but... Being confident a lot of the time comes back to belief, comes back to having deep belief in yourself and thinking you're good enough. And often you can sort of, you can get some short-term confidence through sort of positive self-talk and affirmations, but over um, the longer term, those affirmations do help your, your belief, but it all comes back to having deep belief in yourself. All the best players, they all have incredible belief in themselves. They all have um, incredible, no matter what the situation is, they all have this incredible deep belief in themselves. And they're, um, they're able to just, yeah, they're just confident because no matter what's going on, they feel like they're good enough. They feel like they can handle any situation. Great question, mate. Um, we've got Flanagan, Nath, on Instagram. Seem to be able to play a lot of shots down 
while batting the nets and training in the middle, but game day seems to get excited and scoop what would recommend doing. It's just about relaxing in a game. Like we all go into a game tense and nervous because we're worried about getting out. So a game is trying to just relax. And one of the best ways, one of the biggest skills, one of the best skills you can learn is to sort of have deep breathing, is to just really focus your attention and energy on your breathing. Um, just taking a deep breath allows you to A, become present, become in this um, present moment, but B, um, it sort of takes away all that clutter and all those thoughts that you get when, you, when you're playing. So if you've got all the shots in the net, there's no reason why you can't do it in a game. It's just releasing that fear of, of getting out, fear of judgment, fear of failure. You've just got to try and express yourself. You see David Warner, Steve Smith, Virat Kohli, all the best players are at, they, they'll hit a six first ball if they, if they have to. Smith runs down the wicket first ball, hits over the top. He's not, they're not scared of getting out. They don't fear getting out. So if you can release that fear, accept you're going to get out, um, and then just play with that freedom. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to play in a game like you do in, a net, in the nets. Shanna Bay has joined us. Dipper, thanks for joining us, mate. Legend. Uh, former first grade cricketer here in Perth for university. Just checking the Instagram feed. Liam, thanks for joining us. Liam, Charlie. Um, how do we sign up for the Peak Performance Program? Like we said just now, uh, on our website, um, it's on the homepage, so you can go through there. Um, uh, how to improve defensive shot? How to improve forward defensive shot? Because I fall. Again, your forward defense is about your balance. Like all your shots, your head position, your balance is incredibly important. Um, if your head's falling over, it's probably falling over outside your your foot, uh, your front foot, and then you're not able to get clean access to the ball. So it's about trying to push your head at the line of the ball, not let it fall over. All comes back to your stance. All comes back to being completely still in your stance, completely still and having your eyes level in your stance. Davey Tudor's joined us. Davey, how are you, mate? Thanks for joining. Uh, Peter Ford, how often should young cricketers go through the process of self-reflection on their performances? Can too much self-reflection inhibit confidence or freedom? Brilliant question. So I guess, there, yeah, too much certainly can. Um, I guess it comes, self-reflection is excellent. Self-reflection allows you to learn about yourself, but you don't want it to just over become sort of overbearing. You just want to learn two or three key things. We ran a, a, um, a clinic here, a muscle class clinic here in Perth in November with Chris Rogers, and he spoke about writing down a, a few things every time he, like every session he learns. Adam Vo just joined us. We've got a test player online. How are you, V? Thanks for joining us. Um, so Bucky talks about after every session, especially young players, after every session, writing down a few points that they've learned from that session. And that's enough. You don't need to go into too much detail. You don't need to become completely self-analytical and critical and and stuff you want to just take a few key points from each session whether it's a, tr a practice session or it's a game so just really um, one or two key points that you can refer back to hopefully you've learned a lesson from and you can refer back to um, so yeah you, you don't want to do it too much but after every session you should be trying to learn something because that'll fast track your development we see a lot of players who train then they go off forgetting everything they've learned and they come back and they're starting at the same point again so if you're able to write, keep a cricket journal or cricket diary, that's one of the most um, powerful tools you can, you can do, um, you can have, is to keep a journal, keep a diary that you can refer back to, and you can often say, what did I do that day I got 100 that allowed me to, me to perform well? And you can refer back to it and say, okay, I'm going to do that again, I'm going to do that in my warm-up, I'm going to do that in my preparation, I'm going to go back, and you can learn lessons from your previous self by, by having a bit of self-reflection. Hope that helped, Peter. Eliza, hey Tom, want to try and develop my front foot game and get stronger down the ground, but don't get a big enough stride. But don't get a big enough stride in any advice. Eliza, um, I'm a big believer that you don't need a big stride in. Um, it's all about your head position. I think a lot of coaches talk about take a big step at the ball, but what that does is when you go, when you take a big step at the ball, your head and your weight stays back and you can't get power through the ball. So, getting power through your shot. Um, and to get stronger down the ground, it's all about getting your weight through your front leg. It's all about getting, your, and that's about getting your head forward. So, I would you don't want to take no step or a tiny step because then you sort of you can be upright and fall over. 
But you want to take my batting coach um, when I was at Middlesex, Mark O'Neill, who's an, a, a batting guru. He, he always talked about taking a measured step. So something that's comfortable, it's not too short, it's not too big, but something that's comfortable where you can get your head forward. And then it's all, it's all your head. It's all your head. Get that head forward over your front foot. Try and contact the ball late. Um, hard to go into technical stuff on here with... Um, but we, Eliza's again, someone else who's done our peak performance program. So Eliza, send us a message and we can certainly, if you've got any video footage, we can give you some feedback on that. Um, how are we going for time? Right, we've been going 40 minutes, you beauty. Uh, we'll see what else we've got on Instagram. Thanks again for joining us, guys. Uh, if you've got any questions, happy to help. And Davis has joined us. Hello, Annie, family friend from Alice Springs. Um... I'm struggling to have the mindset to go over the top. How can I adjust not being scared to go over the top? Good question. Well, firstly, it comes down to practice. You've got to put the practice in so that you, you feel confident to play that shot. You can't just expect to hit over the top if you haven't practiced. It's like playing a cover drive or a cut shot or something. You've got to put the practice in and you've just got to get the work in to, to get it to a point where you don't doubt yourself. You sort of say to yourself, I'm going to go over the top and then you've got to go through with it if the ball's in the right area. We're, put, we're releasing a, um, a masterclass program tomorrow that Simon and myself have put together on, on how to play spin. So if anyone's interested and you haven't already registered, send us your email um, and we'll send you all the info. It'll be released tomorrow at 6 p.m. Sydney time. So in that, we talk a lot about using your feet and also hitting over the top. And you've got to pick, you've got to know what area you want the ball to be in to, to then go over the top. So if you're if you're wanting it full and straight, um, then you've got to make sure it's in that area to go through with your shot. But you've got to just back yourself. It all comes down to releasing that fear of getting out. Um, in the nets, you can probably play it fine because there's no fear. But if you're hitting it perfectly or hitting it well all the time in the nets, then you shouldn't worry in, if, in a game. You've just got to... And once you've done it once or twice, you will be able to do it more regularly. It's just getting over that initial fear. So, yeah, we cover that a lot in the spin program, so if you're interested, uh, send us a message about that. We might look at uh, wrapping up shortly, guys. Um, Rowan, Philip, how can I improve my footwork? Just drills, mate. Do the basics. I think the basics are often overrated, are underrated by young players. I, th we, I see all the best players I've ever sort of played or trained with, the international players, they all just do the basics well. They all practice the basics from the basics is where your games form. So if you want to improve your footwork, just do underarms. Start with underarms, then progress, and don't ever neglect the basics. And footwork is like footwork is um, really important in batting. Um, so you've got to get that right. But it's it's all about your head position as well. So do do the basics well. Um, skipping can be good to speed up your feet a bit, but it's all about volume. It's all about practice. You, you're not going to improve it without practice and getting the volume in. Um, Facebook, how are you? I'm just checking Instagram. We're nearly towards the end. Um, can you upload some tutorials with a left-handed batsman on YouTube? Yep, we will be doing that. Simon is the left-handed batter, so we'll be getting some videos of him up there in the future. Um, he'll be talking about many different topics. Tom Nixon's joined. Tommy, young gun from the Northern Territory from Alice Springs, my hometown. Thanks for joining us, Tommy. Um, we've got a club player from Dubai. Thanks for joining us. Is a trigger movement necessary? Again, like a bat, we talked about the, the weight of a bat. A trigger movement is personal preference. I personally don't use one, but everyone's different. And if you feel like you, you need one to get yourself going, then that's absolutely fine. It's not necessary at all. You see a lot of international players, a lot of the world's best players don't trigger. Um, a lot do. So uh, whatever's nece necessary, perf personal preference but the most important thing is that you're still at the release of the ball. You don't want to be moving at the release of the ball. You want to be nice and still at release. And that comes back to what we talked about getting LBW and playing on the leg side. Um, so nice and still if you are um, doing a trigger movement. Uh, Peter Ford, another question. Baseball often talks about strike zones. One of the biggest challenges working with young cricketers is getting them to identify their best scoring shots and what area the ball should be in to play these shots. Absolutely. And I just actually want to share a really quick story with you. I, I mentioned earlier that I caught up with um, one of the WACA coaches, um, Stuart Walters, this afternoon at the WACA during the, one, uh, the first grade final. 
And he, he's this state uh, WA under-19 coach, and he spoke about their, their only goal, their game plan. They won the championship, WA won the championship, and their game plan was to hit more fours and sixes than any other team, and they did that. And they ended up winning the tournament. So that just shows that these guys playing state-level cricket at 18, 19, they were playing with freedom. They were playing without that fear, and that sort of allowed them to perform well. And that's what batting is all about, bowling as well trying to release the fear, trying to release that sort of worry of getting out. And, and Peter, you're absolutely right. If you know your zones, that's, that's a huge understanding of your game. That comes back to understanding yourself and understanding your game. Um, that's a huge thing in being successful. All the best players know their zones, understand what balls they want in their zones, and they really look for those balls. They're really positive and they're looking for those areas. So it might be that you're a good cover driver and you really want the ball full and outside off and you're that's your zone, so you're really looking for that ball. But the, the straighter ball, you might get out LBW a bit, so you've just got to be a bit more cautious for that ball. So great point. Um, we'll go more into detail about strengths and weaknesses and understanding your game in future videos, but thanks for that, Peter. we got Matt Roberts on the line uh, on Facebook. Matt Roberts is a tennis coach in Alice Springs, and he was one of my um, mentors when I was growing up. He was a brilliant influence on my life and um, certainly helped fast-track myself as a person, as a player, um, so hi Matt, thanks for joining us uh, and it just goes to show how important mentors or role models are for, for young players and young people to help them get to where they want to be. Um, so if you haven't got mentors, um, then go and find them, go and seek someone else that's better than you, higher than you, older than you and ask questions, get them to model yourself on someone better than you, model yourself on someone above you and really don't be afraid to ask questions because that's how you learn. Um, so thanks for joining us, Matt. Last few questions. Um, how do you stay focused to convert 30s into 50s? Who's that? Lockie. Good question. Uh, uh, converting 30s into 50s, a lot of it is staying in the present moment. Um, uh, players um, often get ahead of themselves, and they, once they get to 30, they get a bit excited, and they sort of go from third or fourth to fifth gear, and they think they can sort of they change what's worked up until they get to 30. But the key to scoring big runs, whether it's 30 to 50 or 50 to 80, 80 to 100, the key to scoring big runs is being in the moment every ball. Whatever has already happened has happened, and there's no point worrying about what could happen in the future. It's all about being in the moment. If you're on 30 and you feel like you're playing well and you start getting a bit confident, You've got to sort of try and bring yourself back to whatever state you're in up until you got to 30. Nothing changes. It's just about trying to be as in the moment and present as you can. Trying to be in physical fitness has a, a big um, part, plays a big part in mental fitness as well. So be as fit as you can, and that'll help you um, convert those starts. But it's all about being in the moment. Right, we're nearly at 50 minutes, so I'm going to have to wrap up shortly, guys. But thanks so much to everyone for joining us and and interacting. Um, uh, what are the main qualities a good opening batsman should have oh look any batsman wherever you bat qualities is just being able to focus your attention focus your concentration and your attention on the present moment if your attention and focus is elsewhere then you're not focusing on the moment and if you're not focusing on the moment you're not going to perform you're not going to execute your skill as well as you can so Focus your attention on the pre present moment. As an opening batsman, it's really important to know where your off stump is and be able to leave well. You don't want to be fending at balls that um, you don't have to be playing at. But it's also about being positive. You still want to be positive. Even if the ball's new and it might be seeming around or something, be nice and positive. Back yourself. The ball's in your area. Hit it. Warner is a great example. And all the batters these days, they're all positive. They, all, they don't care. They don't think, oh, I've got to face 20 balls before I can hit a shot. If the ball's in their area, they whack it, they hit it. So know your areas. We'll talk more about that in the future. Um, we've actually spoken a little bit about that in one of our YouTube videos. Um, so know your areas, but opening batsmen, know your off stump, uh, leave well, um, and be patient. And got to be able to bat long periods. Got to be able to bat and absorb tough periods of bowling. Got to be mentally tough. And that's another thing we talk about in our program. So um, I think there's quite a few more questions. So I... Uh, I won't go into them. We've been on for about 50 minutes. So just uh, thanks to everyone for joining us. We're going to be doing this um, every week now on a Sunday evening around this time. Simon will be on some weeks and I'll be on others. 
um, and then we'll try and get together at times. Simon's in Sydney and I'm in Perth, so we uh, we chat all the time and we uh, we do a lot of things together. But we'll uh, we'll take it in in turns at doing these live chats and answering your questions. If you do have any questions, um, send them through to us. We'll do our best to get back to you. We've We've been sort of um, getting smashed and we love it. It's great to hear from everyone, but it does make it hard for us to get back to you straight away. So we'll do our best to get back to you. And if we don't, we'll, uh, we'll try and answer the questions on the live feed or on one of our YouTube videos or, or Facebook videos. So um, thanks again. If you're interested in any of our programs, uh, send us a message. We're releasing our spin, How to Play Spin Bowling Masterclass tomorrow. Um, it's going to have, it's going it's an all-encompassing um, epic program. It's got um, all the lessons we've ever learned. Uh, Simon played has been playing at elite level for 15 years, so have I. Simon's a former professional cricketer, so am I. It's going to cover the mindset of sp um, playing spin, game plans to spin, how to pick different deliveries, um, attacking spin, att drills to improve your attacking spin, defending spin, and drills to um, improve your defending spin. So that goes um, becomes available tomorrow. Um, there's a discount uh, in the price for the first 30 people, so make sure you, you get on. We'll send an email out tomorrow. If you're interested, send us a message. Um, anyway, we'll leave it there. I uh, hope you all got something out of that. Um, let, leave a comment or send us a message after this if, you, if you've got any more um, questions or something you want us to expand on, and uh, we will chat to you again soon. Thanks, Legends.